Okay, today um, I'm going to be showing how I get this lovely effect of uh, um, north to north, which is basically because there's two fields inside this end and they're both doing the same thing. Parts of this one at the bottom want to jump into this one, this one here, because there's two fields, remember? But uh, these ones are in the way, which is why they still kind of jump up. Because I discovered something with a ring magnet the other day, and um, I'll be putting that on video in a bit because I barely understand it myself. But both sides of the field are on both sides of the magnet, and I can easily prove it by breaking a ring magnet. It's quite strange, really. So I just thought I'd let you know that that the two fields are on either side of the magnet are either side fields of the magnet. It's I can't explain it any better than that, really, without kind of showing you. So. This is our north and north, or in south and south. Double helix is pushing together. See how things are still springing up, though? They're trying to grab, but they can't. They're curling around underneath these two because there's nothing to grab. It's trying to grab it, but it can't because there is actually another field on the end of here, which is kind of attached to this side. But anyway, so there's our beautiful north to south or south to north rotation field in. It rotates in because this is rotating into the heart as a rolling interlinked wave, just exactly like smoke coming out of a cigarette and performing um, rollover halo waves one after another, a rolling wave. That's what is happening here because it spreads all around the back. This is a rolling wave. It just looks like a heart because this is a one micron thin piece of ferrofluid. So anyway, that's our north... Blah blah blah. Try and cut out a bit of the light. So there's our two vortex fields, obviously, and it's a circle because they're everywhere. But we've isolated one of them. So north to north is a scroll lock rotation, whereas north to north and south to south is trying to spring up into it, but it can't because these are opposing vortices. And so they cannot intertwine. Whereas this one, they immediately intertwine. And pull it right down in. Look at that. It's quite incredible. Okay, so how am I getting this beautiful looking shape? Because like the colours that you can't see due to the camera, all these blues and reds and things, um, are quite wonderful. So, here it is. It's dead easy. I'm not doing anything special. Well, I might be, but, you know, that'd be for you to decide. I've got two levels. I have... <laughs> let's not bother doing that. I have an open light box. I don't have any glass on my light box. I've got about five rows of lights, 300 LEDs. It's super bright, obviously. On Underneath, I've got another plate, which uh, that's why you can see that bottom field underneath in red. Um, I'm not going to tell you completely how I was doing the 3D thing, but just how to get this lovely shape here. So, we got one underneath, then we got one on top, and like this one's got no ferrofluid here, a little bit here. That's why I'm getting the colours, um, is due to very thin ferrofluid. But the trick to it all is this. That's probably about 22 and a half degrees, if you ask me. Because 22 and a half degrees is a Fibonacci angle, the other side of 137.5. And that's how energy travels, which I've said from the beginning. So I'm just employing double helix energy flow because energy increases and decreases via a Fibonacci spiral and must change levels at 137.5 or 22.5 or any combination of Fibonacci spiral because it's fractal which is why electricity is fractal and can do anything. So yeah, if you set, like I've taped the magnet there, Brian, that one's for you. Tape your magnet because yeah, it flying around is quite annoying. So I, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I've taped my magnet and then I've just got that one sounds up and that way it can't do anything. But that's how I get that lovely, whatever these colors are. 
and the way it's coming in, which is different from when you would hold a ferro. Like I've got plates too. I don't have. I haven't got a lot. Of, in fact, I don't use any circles. I use plates because then I can move them wherever the heck I want. Like if you've got a plate, you can check your inertia line right at this edge. I don't know if you can do that with the ferro discs. Maybe you can. But I made myself all kinds of plates. Great big one, big one, great big long one, small one under there. This one's an inch wide. Boom, 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 boom. Will we get anything up here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, look at that little field in there. Just on the top there. See, look, gone now. Woo! See, gone. Beautiful. So, I can do kind of pretty much whatever I like with these. I can sit there, try and find an angle. Boom, 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 boom. We had it then. Where's the light? So yeah, with my plates, I can do whatever the heck I want, and look wherever I want. So, there's a few of the little secrets. Um, I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to map the field, of course. Um, waiting for the microscope, that's going to be at least another month. The GoPro camera should have arrived yesterday, and it's not here today. So yeah. So yeah, the secret to getting that shot. I mean, look at it, that's just incredible, isn't it? Is... Approximately, well, I don't even know what that angle is, but it has to be around about 22.5 due to the fact that I can see it. And I know what energy does. And I know how it travels. <laughs> Which is why, with God's guidance and wisdom, because he showed me all this thing in visions in 2014, three weeks, day and night, and now I'm just discovering it all. That's the whole point. I've said this before, and it takes a word, a picture, and boom, it gets me investigating. So yeah, that is how you get to see other invisible fields that you don't see when you're looking in that direction. Because that's all well and good, but this angle just changed all of science. I have proven that magnetic fields attach by scroll lock, which is easily provable because there's two scrolls there, and they're not locking because they're opposing fields, or same fields, whatever, north to north and south to south. But, I'm going to show you with a ring magnet that, because this all bends up, see it's trying to grab something, but these are in the way. So what we're seeing is the ferrofluid being attracted, so the matter has been attracted to the energy, and basically shown us the V at the bottom, and these two loops, because the, the bottom, the loops that are coming up, are trying to get past this, to join the field that is here, which is the one that's on this side, which is why it pulls it, when you have a magnet in your hand, you can feel it whip it around. There's a reason both fields attached to both and Oh, it's so bizarre. I, will, I can't even explain it. I'll have to show you with the ring magnet. Because, um, yeah, I can't explain it. I can't. What I saw was just ridiculous. And so, anyway, back to this fantastic discovery. Yeah, so these won't because they're just domes and they won't meet. But you stick in a rotational field that is part of a rolling wave, and it will pull it into that rolling wave. And it rotates it in. Form. And then it also rotated it into the back field, which is exactly... Oh, look, and there's the anchor again. Oh, that's a good one. Huh. Nice. So there we go, there's your anchor again, which again just shows it's all to do with electricity and electromagnetism. It's got zero to do with aliens or crazy crap. It's all to do with energy. Look at that. Wings, you name it. Beautiful. So there we go. This is how I conduct my stuff, my experiments, and that 22 degree, 22.5 degree angle is how you get all these lovely colours that you do not see when you look at a ferro cell that way. I'm just having fun and playing and having a right laugh. Thanks very much. My name is Lee. I follow the Christ Jesus. And uh, yeah, 
I hope other people will now go on and do other stuff because I'm moving on to other things. I'm going to map the field and that'll be it for me. That will be everything explained about magnets. Once I've done the ring, ma ring magnet, of course, because that's kind of going to blow your mind. And, I, and I'm not sure how... It doesn't change the theory, but it does something weird to it. But not unexpected because it is two opposite fields. I don't know. Anyway, I'm waffling now. All right. God bless you all. And turn to God because there's a storm coming. And then the end will come. Thanks very much.